Hi guys, it's Graham from Mowgli Adventures and today is an exciting day. We get to take out all our old kit from the van and start installing our new kit, our new Renergy 200 amp batteries. We've got two of those, a big 2000 watt inverter charger from uh, Renergy, our MPPT controllers and a new B2B battery charger. So I'm pretty excited because over the last few months, we've been doing some reviews of all of these products. So if you want to know what we're installing, have a check back on the uh, earlier programs and you can see how it goes. So this next piece is about installation of all of the kit. And firstly, I've got some new kit because it's an upgrade. I'm going to remove kit, uh, not particularly exciting and interesting for you. But how we install it next might be. You've noticed by that short film, it wasn't easy to take all the old kit out. And that's because over the last five or six years, I've upgraded things or bought things on the way which didn't fit, etc. And so now I don't think it's a bad idea that a lot of people are offering or suggesting that you put a building in a module and just bring it in and plug it in and play. And I think there's a lot to be said for that, particularly if you can put some space around that framing and put it in you know, the box or whatever, or the board, and so it fits. A lot of people are choosing to put it under their garage. Now I have a walkthrough style of the house, and so I don't want a garage. I'm, I'm quite happy not having a fixed bed. So I'm gonna think about re-engineering this framework around here to see whether I can make a plug and play module for my kit. But that helps because then I'll be able to show you how to build each piece and install it as we go along. So having thought about how we're going to do this, I'm now going to put some shelving in and a board for all the fuses and the switches that we require for the major components because that's the only way I can see of doing it in a neat way that would be logical to follow and easily to look after in later life. So let's see how we get on. <laughs> So now we've got the panel laid out and I have put all my major components in the place that I'll expect them to fit within the van. I can't make a frame because I've already got furniture. But if you've made the frame up, then you're going to have your components all sitting here in this space and you can connect your fuse panel directly here. So when it comes to making all the cables, I now know the right lengths that I'll be making. And so I can fit them here. And then when we've all done with the filming, I can put them in the van and connect them up. You could say there's an awful lot of space between the fuse and the buzz bar, or the fuse and the isolating switch. But the challenge we've got is that we're going to have to make some cables up. And these lugs for this larger cable will need about four inches between each of the two holes as a minimum. And after that, trying to bend this cable to make it look neat is also going to take space, which is the reason why I've made all the components 
slightly spread out. Now I've used the design tool to help me work out where things should go. So let's have a look where we fit. So our first fuse is the B2B inlet fuse coming from the engine battery to our battery via the B2B charger. That is the inlet fuse. That is the outlet fuse, which leads to the buzz bar sitting here. Also fitted to that buzz bar is the MPBT fuse. Now, because my buzz bar is only 150 amps and my inverted charger is 200 amps, I'm connecting that directly to the battery isolator switch. And off the battery isolator switch, of course, is the main battery fuse. Main battery isolator also feeds back to the buzz bar, which in turn will feed the main supply fuse, which then feeds to the distribution belt 12 volts. Now that 12 volt block has also got the DC connectors there. And I have also fitted an earth point connector here for the entire system. Simple, but there we go. So that was a lot of effort to put together a fuse panel and switchboard that is going to hide in a cupboard. Uh, and I agree with you, but I think it's worthwhile. And yes, I got a little bit carried away with graph papers to make it all nice and neat, but you know, you don't need to do the same. You just need to make it a logical layout because you'll forget what you did in a year or two years time, or somebody will come along and try and fault find, and they need to be able to understand how it all hangs together. And a laid out fuse panel like this is going to help everyone in the future. So one of the other things to think about is when it comes to selling your vehicle, as soon as you tell the potential buyer it's got a DIY electrical system, I suspect they'll become a little bit nervous. If they see a half decent job, at least a semi-professional looking job, or the fact that the system is laid out in a way they can follow, then I suspect their confidence levels will go a lot higher and you may get on with a better sale. So I think it's worthwhile spending the time for those reasons alone. I'm Graham, this is Mogli Adventures, and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.